BMW IBSF Bobsleigh Skeleton World Championships in the penultimate day here at an icy Altenburg in Saxony. Welcome back to our coverage of the first day of racing for the four-man competition. 23 sleds will go in our second heat from a dozen different nations. The second of four heats, an overnight pause, and then the final two runs to decide the medals tomorrow. And John, the track has not been very friendly for many of our drivers today. Yeah, there's no track records, but the track still is treacherous. Uh, Johannes Lochner didn't have a smooth ride. Silver medal in this event last year on this track. He won the world championships three years ago in Koenigsegg, tying to the hundredth of a second with Friedrich. But he's chasing down the surprise of the day. Team Meyer, Benny Meyer from Austria. They posted the second best times. He was World Cup points second behind Friedrich. And on this day, he was only eight hundredths behind Friedrich at the bottom. The closest anybody's been to Friedrich in the whole season in four-man box. And Friedrich, well, it's his race really to lose, but they make this mistake at the start. Look at that. They almost hit the wall there. And he comes down, and uh, we thought this was a great run until the next sled down was Meyer, who only had 800s behind him. And at least Benny Meyer is making it interesting. That guy has won 16 out of 17 races so far this year, Martin, and it's his race to lose. Yeah, absolutely it is. He is the hot favorite in every possible bookie. But Benny Meyer, really very close in the first heat. Now, there were mistakes from Friedrich. There often are a few. Nobody's perfect, especially not on this track. But we'll have to wait and see how our second heat shakes out and what the overnight leaderboard looks like. Fastest 20 sleds go through at the end of heat three. Roman Heinrich has pulled out, so we do not have 24 sleds, only 23 remaining in the competition. Not quite sure why. Little update from Jane Channel and why she wasn't in the team competition this morning for Canada. She had a quad strain, and of course, when the Canadians go back home, they have a fortnight of quarantine in a hotel. So if she'd done something major, that would have been a big issue. Well, there you see Hansi Lochner on the left, Francesco Friedrich on the right. Friedrich talking about the gentle steering that he might have had to put in in a couple of places on this track. This is not a track for subtle nuances. This is a track for survival and trying to keep the damn thing in a straight line. Even Brun and his team, the Italians are here, the Germans, the Romanians, and just about every other nation that has a sliding operation. Well, our second heat start list goes 20 down to one, and then the three who are outside the top 20 go in their ranked order, 21st, 22nd, and 24th, uh, because uh, sled 23, will not be going. Francesco, uh, beg your pardon, Roman Heinrich of France has pulled out uh, sled 22, that is. So let's get our second heat underway. Top of the ice, Marcus Treichel of Austria. 20th fastest start, 20th at the bottom of the track. But that doesn't tell the whole story. He was on an improving first run until mistakes below the Kreisel. Let's see if he can find some extra pace in the second heat today. Well, Mark, he, we know he can drive. I was 10th last year in the World Championships here. 20th best start in the first run. 20th best time, but Martin, he could have had a top 13 or so run without those mistakes down there below the Chrysler. And so many of them are kind of traceable back to how you come off corner nine and how you get into the Chrysler. This labyrinth dictates corner nine, and that is solid as a rock. Well, he's the rabbit. He's got a very lot better ice to work with than he had in the first run. And he's, this is where the mistake was, right down there, Mark. He's by that albatross and see what he does in the graveyard. Oh, oh. Ooh, wrong, wrong, wrong side of 15 on the entry. That'll oh, cost him, so the sled wow. and there it gets away from him. 54.86, and compared to his first tee time, Martin, he's 2100s faster. That could have been 4100s faster, Martin, without those two mistakes right there. How was the sled There's not no up sleeping in the roof on this down track. there? Yeah. How was he yeah. not in the roof? Or rolled in. Unbelievable. Martin could have rolled in. in and, yeah. Went straight in and shot up. Watch this. 
Now watch what happens here. He comes to the left side of the screen. He taps. That forces him to go to the right. And now it's panic mode to go into the next curve. He could have easily rolled in. You will not see too many four-mans have that type of line in 15. That And look, he gets up near the roof on 16. Yeah. Now that causes him to major, major concussion with the wall here on the right. That's worth some time. That was a major reflex save. That was phenomenal reactions by Marcus Treichel not to crash down there at 80-odd miles an hour. Next up, Maxim Andrinov of Russia, seventh best at the start, only 11th, uh, 11 hundreds ahead of Treichel after the first of our four heats. With a great start here and a great drive, Martin, he can move up four or five spots. He went 22nd in the first run. Not very good ice to work with, but with a start like he's got, he's got a chance to really move up the ladder. But he has to keep these are great strength. lines. And Martin, and Martin, we remember in Whistler in 2017 or uh, uh, 19, yeah. he was in seventh or fourth place. He finished yeah. fourth, and then we haven't seen him. You think uh, we're both thinking he might have had some injuries early in the season why we didn't see him until this race nice line into the Chrysler very good speed second best speed though Ooh, losing some time back to Trichel but Trichel made well, big here. mistakes here Andriano yeah, he does accelerate away again could be as much as four tenths to get the advantage by the line 2200s he didn't make much of that did he I mean, nope. Trichel nearly that crashed, shows you how good. And, and yeah, yeah, 2100's better in the second run. That's what you want to do if you have the track gives it to you, 2100's. I don't know if that's going to give him a chance to move up. Yeah, he, he should catch Lam and Dean. The next two sleds he should catch easy. The next three sleds oh. he should catch. That's his teammate Stolnev. Not much fault here on these lines, Martin. Into 13, 14, little nudge, but that wasn't bad. Well, 18 hundreds of a second cover him from 19th up to 14th place. So that's six sleds covered by 18 hundreds. You can give that away with almost any error you make on this track. So our third starter then is the 30-year-old from Korea, Yun Jin Suk. Didn't race here last year. His only previous four-man worlds was in Whistler, 2019. And he finished in 17th place there. He is in 17th place, tied with Lamin Dean after the first of our four heats. Mark, I wonder if this is Son's silver medal sled. His teammates, the silver medal sleds from the Olympics in 2018. Well, if it is, it's fast. And he's behind now because of the start. Good line, little drift there. 2200's back, but that's relative to the start deficiency. And he was late there and still got problems, and he's going to fall back. Yeah. Sled noses sideways into the Chrysler, comes out sideways. Oh, he was late there. Watch out. Watch out Way here. Out. This is a, oh. this is uh these big four vans are tough to get into bad lines, but when they do, they have a mind of their own, and this sled had a mind of its own. There's a really good little wow. social media clip on the IBSF Facebook page with the brakemen talking their way down this track. And a lot of it is, is oh, 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 don't crash here, don't crash here, don't crash here, oh, 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 don't crash, don't crash. And you just know when you see something like that, the brakemen feel it all and they are just going, please keep it up. I don't know how he did this those. Is the exit of nine. And he's up there in no man's land. And the, when you see the cowling split, the articulation split like that, that is a lot of steering. And then here, Martin. Oh, and then how he doesn't roll into there. That's yeah. so forgiving. 13 to 14 compared to the World Championships here in 2008. Even last year. I never he mind scratching happy. the ice. That was digging great chunks out of the ice. 
Oh, breathe again. Yunjin Suk down. Next up, Lamin Dean, tied to the 100th with Alexei Stulner for the Bobsleigh Federation of Russia. I beg your pardon. He was tied with Suk, wasn't he, by, to the 100th? 100th behind yep. Stulner. Then Simon's Joe Another Thierry guy that and ate. late... Late replacement, Tremaine Gilling on the back of the sled. James DeSolo not making it into his first Worlds. DeSolo is a 100-meter sprinter, one of the top ones in Britain, but uh, his replacement's not a slouch either. But yeah, John Lamin on the had that fresh ice to work with. Meter. He did have good ice, but made too many mistakes. Again, got to keep it straight where the straights come. Sounds oh, obvious. Good. He keeps it within 10 hundreds. 10 hundred, 200. Go. He's got a good chance here, Martin. He's, he's stopped That's the bleeding from the start deficiency. Yeah, oh, he's got to come down here clean. Off the he's coming, though. Good lines. This is much better for Lamadine than he did in the first run. Still 100. Okay. Either <laughs> way, of 100. Green, 100, red. Which one's it going to be? 100, there, green. Green one. <laughs> All right, so Anjanov closed seven hundreds on Lamindeen, and Lamindeen broke the tie, or rather Suk broke the tie by fading away to fourth of our four sleds. That might be better than his danger. first run. Yeah. No, no Suk's going to be in. I didn't hear what he said. No joke, man. But well, he, he said the track's lines, a joke. Diff I'm not quite sure how he means. Track's been like this since they opened it, Lamin. Trust me, I've been here for every World Championships. 91. Look at the back end there. Now, that's might what he'd be talking about right there. That's not the track. They didn't move the concrete overnight. We need to start including the braking straight in the track because it's the hardest corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same as Innsbruck. <laughs> I see what he's talking about. Yeah. So Lamin Dean leads by 100 from Maxim Anjanov. Next up, Anjanov's teammate, Alexei Stulnev, with Alexei Vaitsev, Vasily Kondratenko, and Roman Koshelev on the back of the sled. Well, this is the race with the, within a race. The, who's going to emerge as the top Russian, which has a lot to do, maybe, I don't know whether it's funding or sleds or equipment or... Stolnev was the top dog. Andrianov's been on the bench. We haven't seen him, but could get pretty close here. Well, so he's, he's right now Stulnev. behind Andrianov. Yeah, the problem for Stolnev is this isn't about being top Russian. This is about not being last Russian. Because Rostislav Gaitukovic is comfortably top Russian right now. Yeah, by four tenths in that first heat. Here comes Stolnev, though. Yeah. He's Roll. coming back. Nice He's line. got green numbers. Good lines there. He's pulling away. So these athletes are starting to figure out this uh, track too tough to tame. Tomorrow. He does. 54-77. 1100's better. Maintains yep. his position. That was a good run, Martin. There wasn't a lot of helter skelter yep. in that one compared to the others. Went out from 300s to 800s ahead of Lamin Dean. I beg your pardon, out from 100 to 500s. Yeah, they... Not much in it. No, this is just uh, very commercial lines. Andrianov at the best speed. We saw that. Look, at that's his perfect exit of 13 to 14 to 15 as we've seen. That's why he's the top so dog. Far. Yep, but we're talking tiny increments here, aren't we? A very close battle. Stulnev by five from Anjanov, one further back. And then we get to Mihai Tenter of Romania. He was 800s ahead of Alexei Stulnev, 15th place after the first of four heats. Raul Dobrik, Ciprian Doroxi, and Christian Radu, the crew. Now these guys load really well. They get a decent getaway. But great velocity in the first run. 33, that's 32, but velocity was better. He drove pretty well, and as soon as he say that, he hits that little exit. Oh, those are big two pressures he took on Omega. 
But he did well in the bottom part of the track, Martin. If he keeps this 10 or 11 yeah. here, he's got a chance to catch in the bottom. If he bleeds out to 15, he's in trouble. 11. Mm, he's got a chance. Fifth zone. best speed. Yeah, he's got yeah, a chance, so but he's so. got to be perfect. 14. He's coming back 100. He's got to yeah. do what Stillnove just did. Right at us, no variance. It's 15. Now he's going to lose That's at least growing. two places, Martin. Two places yes, he's he going to drop. Three, because the top four, four are covered three by places. 600s. Yeah. So it is still a tough battle. Top four now covered by 1500s. That's not normally what you get separating a medal battle. And we're talking here about being 15th. So 55 flat, that's two tenths slower than his first heat. Little mistake up top, Martin, the curve three, four. Yeah. This is down below. You know, mistake up top is what really hurt him. Down here, he was yeah. pretty good. That's pretty good lines. Snuck right onto the takeout of 15 on his terms. But you're right, that mistake, two, three, four, that was haunting him right down to the finish line. Just ahead was Chris Spring of Canada. Mihai Tentea, um, uh, 1.02 off the lead. And Chris Spring, one second off the lead. Mike Evelyn, Mark Malacca, and Chris Patrician, all new to World Cup and World Championship sliding this season. It's a crew that the Springer put together last year as he returned to bobsledding after a couple of seasons away. 25 they had in the first run, 26 this time. Second best speed, fourth velocity. You try and equal or improve on your start to your velocity. And then you don't want to make any mistakes. Springer, who's won a Europa Cup race, the second line of big competition on the IBSF Tour. He won a Europa Cup race here, I think early January. Yeah, it was. Yeah. In a four man. And uh, the 5th of January is the date in the diary where he had his big accident here. He said, you try not to slide on it, but he almost inevitably do end up sliding on that day in training or something. And he came back here in a four man with a new crew and uh, showed Altenberg oh, it doesn't always run. get to win. 54 7 6, 200s away from his first heat. Little quicker, so that's good, consistent driving from Chris Spring. But he might need a bit of a jump forward if he's going to, yeah, move him up the order much. I think he's, I think he's going to move up because there's, there's uh, two sleds in front of him that are tied, right? No, 76, no. But he's got a chance to move up one or two sleds. That's on Stolnev, the leader, or the leader before the Springer. Little Brian Adams in the background. <laughs> He's Canadian. Well, I guess do a great job. I guess, here. Well, I guess he does live in Vancouver now. Or that's often where he parks his mobile home. So, Youth Olympic champion Patrick Baumgartner from 2012 Youth Olympic Games with new boy Eric Fantazzini, the rookie at two, Costantino Ugi and Lorenzo Bellotti on the back of the sled. He has been for the last couple of weeks. Going to give up some time at the start here, probably a 32 or 33. Canadians had a 525, but Baumgartner drove pretty well, Martin, in the first run. And this, the load there is great, 530. Proved their start. And their telemetry's not working. That's that little thing sticking up on the front of the sled. Ooh, yeah, he comprehensively out drove his start. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Now, 200, so he you know, keep himself ahead of 200 to the next clock, he's online. Uh -huh. Skid off nine. Away. He's better than that. I would bet that he's got the best speed right there, Martin. 700s coming back a little bit. Ooh, that tap's not going to help. Perfect. Down to four. Gonna this is going to be another it? one, Martin. They were 200s of a second apart. away again. And he was 200s up on spring. Springer. He's 200s back. 
Now this is a little bit more yeah, a little bit more traditional Altenburg close tight racing in four man. They've got more control, it's less random than it was in the two seaters last weekend in the women and the two man race, and definitely much more controllable than the monobobs we were watching at lunchtime. Oh that's a that was watching from a different planet, watching those sluts come yeah. down. Good cohesion here by the Italians. You know, the number two guy got to learn to use those both arms together, one at a time, but not bad. Don't forget, it's now 5.26 local time. The sun has gone down. The temperature is starting its downward trend towards about a minus 10, minus 12 overnight low. So the ice is going to remain just as hard. Yun Jong Won next up, 11th after the first heat, tied with Brad Hall. They were three hundreds out of the top ten. Again, tiny, tiny gaps. He drove well, Martin. 26 start time. So if he gets 26, 27, even a 25, he's on line 29. Fell off a couple hundreds there. And, but he drove well, Martin. Drove himself into that position. And he had good uh, speed down at the bottom Western. as well, didn't he? The bottom. Yes, he did, yeah. yeah. And, so if he's clean up this here. This is a silver medal sled. I think that silver medal sled was on the other Korean team. Either that or it's in a museum somewhere. Second best speed at the Chrysler. Drift, put enough of the gap here, Mark. Yeah, that's perfect. And that's not, but still got Three. enough in the bank. He'll be the leader, Martin. Yeah. Question is, is it good enough to move up? Yeah. 54-75. Uh, uh, tenth slower than his first heat. Maybe that yep. double tap there into 14 or 15 took it away. I also think that you won't see many teams improve from their first heat time from here forward, Martin. I think the tracks had enough. I think the tracks said that's it for you. You know, the guys earlier have the chance to deal with better ice. And most of the guys in the back are dealing with bad ice in the first run anyways. So, but two for two, Martin. He said, rather than the deficient start time, he's had two really good trips down this track. 14-15 was a little bit squirrely, but that was the big mistake in the run. So Yun Jong Won is our race leader, and we have 11 sleds from the first heat. The top 11 still to go. He was tied to the 100th with Great Britain's Brad Hall. He started only two sleds apart. Taylor Lawrence, Nick Gleason, and Luke Dawes, the trio here behind Brad, who finished in seventh place in the Worlds here last year in four-man. Pretty good drive down the track. The first run, 27 they had, 33 going 600 slower, Martin. That's not good. He's going to need every hundred. Yeah. Juan had a better start than that, 29. That's why you see the red numbers. Martin, what are the odds? Both the uh, Korean number two sled and the British number two sled are tied. But the Korean number one sled and the British number one sled were tied. What are the odds of that? Yeah, well, one of those ties has been broken, and I sense this might as well. Maybe going in the favor of Yun Jong Won. Good speed, though, from Brad Hall. That's about Ooh, where Won was, but out. a big skid. And that is going to cost him 1,600s, covers the top him. three. He could drop down to fourth place at the line. Three spots. Yep. That skid. Oh, he won behind the, Stulnev, so he drops another spot. I was going to say, Stulnev is 2,500s back. Does he drop that far? He does. 30, so not 11th 30, overnight, but he will be no worse 30, than 15. worse. Yeah. But th that skid was everything. Comes up here a little late on the yep. curve, and then all of a sudden the back end gets away from him. And so forgiving that curve 13 that could used to roll into there or roll out of 14. And then down here he's he's beating himself up, I'm sure, like wow. Yeah. My speed's gone there. And that's the exit of the Chrysler, just leads you into 11-12. And if you take 11 too early, 
It's all wrong to the line. Yun Jong Won, our leader. So we have our fastest 10 sleds from the first heat still to go. And then the remaining three. Yun Jong Won in the leader's box. And how far away are we looking? Well, 10th place was 300s ahead of him. And that's Mikkel Vogt. Seaman Friedley next up. That's Friedley's crew just going through. This is the uh, ante room, John, the waiting lobby to get to the track. Behind him, this is the sled for Oscars Melbardis. The next up, you can see just in the background for Rostislav Gajcukovic. So everything is back timed from your scheduled ice time. You're warming up, you're getting your head in the game. You want to be absolutely spot on. Fadol still hasn't taken his helmet off. He is kicking himself mentally now. That mistake, he was really looking to move up. And he dropped just four spots. didn't get the opportunity. Yeah. And here's the parking lot outside. Last year, there was a big tent there covering all the sleds. Because of the COVID situation, that tent is not there. So there's much more fresh air and air circulating, which obviously is better for the athlete's health. Maybe not quite so kind conditions for working on the sleds. And there is your race leader, Yun Jong Won. Well, he could end up in the top 10 overnight. And in fact, what are we looking at? He was 1400s out of eighth place. There could be still some fairly significant changes before we get to the top three or four sleds. And the key on this track is mistakes. The fewer you make, the faster you go. Now, that's true everywhere, but there are so many big mistakes to be made here. That's last year's crowd. I'm sure they all wish they were here as well. Day one of the BMW IBSF four-man box day world championships. Fastest 10 sleds from the first heat next up as we go into heat two. Mikkel Vogt of Switzerland, 10th place. 300s in the bank ahead of Yun Jong Won of Korea, who was tied for 11th. He's our current leader. And folks chasing teammate Seaman Friedley, who was only 500s ahead of him. Martin Haven and John Morgan watching this develop. 29th start, couple hundred slower. Boat went 20th in the first run, so he didn't have great ice to work with. He's in a dog fight with the sleds behind him, the sleds in front of him. A good run here, Martin, could put himself solidly in the top 10. But you know what? You know, a really good run. He was 2,300 out of the top six. He could be knocking on the door. That's a good exit there. Third best speed. Again, good lines here. 300s to 200s, though he's lost 100 back. Going to need to be clean here. And it's down to 100th, Martin again, another one too close to call. Either way, red or green. Oh, 400's 400. back, Yun Jong Won go. grabs another scout. Peter Ramsidal, oh, sigh of disappointment. That means the vote may Look have up. slipped out of the top 10 overnight. Yun Jong Won moves up another, Martin. He started 19. Mm -hmm. And they had the exact same start times in the run. But Juan, the Olympic silver medalist, outdrove this young Swiss pilot, or the Swiss are putting a lot of, banking a lot of money on him. Good lines. Can't fault much of this. Little airborne bottom right runner there. Yeah, end of his third season driving. Mikkel Vogt for Switzerland, done and down for the day. Next up, his teammate Seaman Friedley. In Whistler, Friedley was on the back of Vogt's sled. And Friedley now making his second world championship, his bigger part, his first world championship appearance as a driver. In fact, he was pushing Mikkel Vogt this time last year in the four man race as well. Well, he started first, Martin. He had the best ice to work with. They got a little drift there. 524 is a decent start. 300's worse than their first heat. He's in a drift. Martin, I think he could fall three or four places if, you know, he doesn't have a lot of experience. He had a lot of great ice to work with. And again, the battle to become 
the best in your country is on the line here. His teammate yeah. Bo did not post a good time. And he's got a 10 hundredths lead right now on the bank. Ooh. And that's not going to oh, help. Oh. No, that'll Big be in the red speed. by the time he gets down to the chicane at 11 and 12. Three hundreds only. Oh, and he skips into of pressure 13. there. Clean. Two hundreds, but so not fast enough. Oh, he's gone over. over. Whoa! He's finish though. He will finish. Fifteen, Mark. He got in there too late. Now, boy, they better grab the sled there. Somebody should grab the sled because yeah. they're going to go all the way well, back. There is a smart the brakeman, brakeman right is there. out. Yeah, that's Andreas Haas, the rookie. And he gets out quick as you like to save the sled. They'll be a five him an minute hold. Piece of chicken tonight. That was a great smart move to know where you are mm -hmm. in the track, know what can happen. There's a very smart. Uh, look at this now. He comes down the left side. He must have tapped because he's in here too late. Steers off. Brings Centrifugal yeah. force brings it back up in the outlet. <clears throat> Boy, not too many yeah. sleds crash in that spot, Martin. Look at those pictures at almost yeah. 80 miles an hour. Not the way you want to look at the finish line. Yeah. Through and down, complete. Yeah. He's, you know, yeah. dropped to the, uh, he's still ahead of the Korean. Yeah. So he's ahead of Sook. He's in 11th with the fastest eight sleds to go. He should make the top 20. It was Greg Jones on yeah, the back. He's going to be 21st. Michael Vokes, Brakeman. Yeah, Seaman Friedley gets across the line, so they are able to go. So it was, it was Greg Jones, the uh, English Swiss athlete who was on the back handles, and he got out very quickly. He's the only man really in that position who can get out in a hurry because the back of the sled is open. And now the track workers are just the, making sure they're the in the yeah, no major holes. Gouges. The grooves There's are one, one right thing. They'll the be on that cleaned up overnight. There's the one right there he's looking at. Yeah. I bet you they come back and take some slush. Look, he's going to do that now. Get his little slush bucket out. I oh, know he's taking yeah, out it was pieces of the... Free, that's Freely in front, absolutely cursing himself. But, I just, in fact, that's not, I think it's Seaman Freely at the back, actually. But, um, yeah, yeah he just got a little late on and brought it down a fraction early. He knew they were in trouble and just tried to haul it off. But unfortunately, the centrifugal force was not done with the sled and pushed it back up on the outlet where the corner had stopped and it was only the vertical wall of the track. So a tough break. So this little delay. If, Martin, if, if I'm up top, I'm liking this. This five, eight minute delay. Could be a couple different degrees of temperature degrees change. You know, I think make the track a little faster. And these four athletes are going to have to pour it out a really good time tomorrow in the third run if they go mm -hmm. to have a chance to stay in that top 20. Pulls it off early. Centrifugal force brings him back up. And hello. Altenberg gets another. Whoa. But they all look fine, Martin. Yep. Well, they'll be bumped we'll and bruised, checks. hopefully. Yeah, hopefully they'll be A-OK. -okay. Doctors there starting to check them out. So about eight of our crashes in training Pete Gunn tells me we're in that finishing corner where we've seen so much drama. And uh, there's been a few others. I mean, there are pitfalls everywhere along this track. As Preshaf was saying today, you know, they're bear traps just waiting to snap at the unwary, all of these corners. And they sure claim their fair share of victims each and every season. Doesn't matter whether you're a beginner ooh, ooh, or a world champion, that. this track is just as tough. Yeah, busted bail. We have to fix that. They're going to have to fix that for tomorrow. Not, for, not only for aerodynamics, but that's where the athlete yeah. has to jump on. Yeah, Chris William, Peter Lankin Ramsidel will have a late night tonight working on that with the uh, with the fiberglass.
So the track hole then puts everybody back a little. Oscars Melbardis and his crew were getting ready, almost stripped down for action. Five minute hold, switch off, and then start again and get yourself back in the frame that you need to take on this track. And this, almost in the words of the wedding ceremony, not to be entered into lightly or frivolously. This is a track that must have your ultimate attention. Yun Jong Won, our race leader for Korea, with the fastest eight sleds still to come out. It's a good second run for the Korean, for sure. Yeah. <coughs> so Oscar Smelbardis. <coughs> yeah. Olympic gold medalist uh, from 2014. Yep. Melbardis has got a little bit of a checkered history with this track. He's had good days and he's had bad days. Let's see what he can produce today. This is the four-man discipline really playing to his strengths. He's not the far starting beast that he was, but with three good guys behind him, Eggers Neme, Laris Kafmanis, and Intars Danvis, he's got lots of muscle and experience. 5.23, that's a uh, hundredth off their start. They don't have the telemetry working in their sled, but the uh, this guy used to dominate the track with the, the sport, with great start times, Martin. He doesn't have those anymore, but uh, you know, he might be a different animal next year when we get into uh, Beijing. Because if he has start times, this guy can compete with anybody. Yeah, Raw Meat always gets the Tiger excited. Yeah. Now, what's he got? Is he going to build this? 1300s. 1400s. 1400s. after the first heat. He's coming back now. 1400s. It's going to pull away right about 18, 1900s. 18. 400s in the yeah, bank you can see over the what one produced. Yeah. Yeah. So he's maintained his eighth spot. I think he's got a chance to move up. 500s behind the Bobsleigh Federation of Russia. Yeah. We're coming up next. Can't fault much of this, Martin. A little late there. But he flops it off, and it comes not perfect. Look at the aerodynamics back there. All those three huge men behind him. Pretty good. I see some shoulders there out of number three. That's pretty good aerodynamics. I'll give him A-. Well, this was a tight battle that Mel Bardis was in because he was only 900 out of fifth. 500s ahead of him, this young man, Rostislav Gajtukovic, World Cup rookie this season in his second World Championships with Mikhail Mordasov, Ilya Malik and Ruslan Samitov. They're building a strong crew around this guy and they need to because this driver might look slender compared to some of the guys behind, but he is fast. Fifth best start in the first run, a 5.17. It should be one or two hundreds worse than that, is what we've seen. There's 17, they maintain. And they have the best start, the best velocity, and then he skids out of the first curve. Well, Barton well, that's put possibly down a pretty challenging run. Yeah, he did. That's possibly his weak point at the moment, Guy Tukovic, is just lack of racing experience. And as the track changes, he doesn't maybe have all the ammunition to follow those changes quite as quickly as some of the more experienced drivers. But Martin, he is a rookie in the field and the world champion. No, he's there last year, right? Yeah. yeah he was right. so second year. Cup. He's still gaining the experience. Yeah. Down to five. I don't think so. Oh. He's been leading the time since out of curve nine. He's going to fall back a couple spots here, maybe, Martin. Yeah. No, Martin's moving up the at top least two. one. 1900s. He's spots. behind one by a hundred. A hundred. So one is up another spot. He's ahead of Stulnev, his nearest teammate, by nearly a quarter second, and ahead of Andrianov by a clear three tenths. He is still BFR's number one driver. And that helmet yeah, livery tells us, John, it's not just us who think so. Red Bull. 
Yeah, somebody in marketing has their eyes on him. Oh, hauled it off well, nine. That's where some of that speed went This is where he away. lost his time. Yeah, he had yeah. 30, 40 hundreds up there, Martin, and he threw it all away right there. I mean, that's hard to get those big sleds in the skid, but when yeah. they do, they have a mind well, of their own. You watch a NASCAR race. When the car goes sideways, it goes backwards fast. That's the same thing here. Oscars keeper Manis for Latvia. Third fastest start from this crew. They were the 23rd of 24 sleds in the first heat. They had about as unfortunate ice conditions as anybody had got. And yet, still came down sixth start. quickest. 5.13 start. They know what they have to do. Perfect run, perfect start. 5.13. Telemetry not working in either of the Latvian sleds. Little skid out of one. Now watch the loops here coming up. The Omega, one, two. Now he escapes down the middle. That's great. 2,800. He needs to get this out to 35 or 40 at the bottom, Mark, to have a chance yeah. to move up. This isn't about Guy this is, perfect. is it? This is about trying to take a medal. Try it. He gets it out to 4,500. I think he's going to put himself in a metal hut. He's 37 now. He could still do that with good lines here, Mark, yeah. in the graveyard. Can he get through here? Not bad. Yeah. He's probably 40 hundreds out, but this is a good run, Martin. This could really be challenging for a medal. 36, 54, 41. Oh, Sanders Prusas, the chief, looks on. Only 500 better than his first trip. That's not going to make yeah, a difference not... unless there's a few mistakes in front of him. Martin, I don't think many sleds are going faster here in the last six or eight sleds than their hat in their first run. But I think this this uh, Latvian, I think, just drove himself back into the metal hunt. Remember, he started 22nd, Martin. Here wasn't perfect. Look at the runner tips checking, yeah. trying to stay off that wall. He started 23rd, but he's only come down a few hundreds quicker, so the ice wasn't that bad in the first heat. Either that, or he made more mistakes in the second, and it didn't look like that bad a run. We're going to find so, out right here. Martin? Yeah. What's Christoph right Harper got? Well, critically, has he got consistency? And that's going to be the big key for him. Kevin Corona, rookie Christian Hammers, making his World Championship debut at three. And Philip Pobeto, who raced here last year, took bronze on the back, and Kevin Corona did rather, on the back of Nico Valter's sled. Gonna need a 26, 27 start here to get in the ball game. 27. So now these 1400s yeah. off the start right there. And he's, he can't make a mistake. Or the Keeper Mattis is, will pick him off. The problem is he does make mistakes. Clips five. Two tenths back. That's going to grow out to 24. He keeps it at 22, 21 hundreds. He's got a chance. Just 32. avoids contact Gone. with the wall. Speed's nowhere. He's not going to get this back. Not going to get this well, back. Mel he's got a big skid there, too. He's behind Mel Bardis. Now he's in danger, dropping behind one, and maybe Guy Tukovic, and maybe both. They're covered by 400s, half a second back. He should just be ahead of them. Yeah. Third at the line, it is. 54, eight, eight, five. Well, that was the run. four tenths slower. But John, four we could tenths. watch that video and point to where all of those went away. Yeah, but I'm telling you, if you look at the last 10 sleds, there's only one or two sleds that went faster. Kieber Manis yeah. is one of them. That run that Kieber Manis had, he's not done moving up yet. He's still got a chance to move up and get ahead of Cripps coming up next. Put himself in a challenging position for tomorrow. After, you know, the start, you know, he's behind at the start. That means you have to be perfect. You can see here, that's not perfect. Might have driven himself out of a medal right there. Yes. He ain't going to be top six at the end of day one, that's for sure. So what about Justin Cripps of Canada? Can he bring himself into a medal position overnight? 1100s off bronze, fourth place. 
With Cam Stones, Ryan Summer and Ben Cokewell. This is a well-drilled, experienced crew. They may be short on racing this year, but the muscle memory remains. 5.19, another strong start. Very experienced crew. <clears throat> but Cripps made some mistakes sideways out of curve 12 in the first run. He's got green numbers now, but he's got to get it out to 12, 1500. It's only two. That's because he got beat up at the start, but he could bring it back here. If he gets it out to four or five hundreds, he's going to maintain his spot. Dead heat, watch out. Ahead, and he's got nothing of that first heat lead left, and he does not have the speed of Kiba Manis. Much Kiba better Manis line here, though. Another Good one line off. here. No, oh, here he comes. Here he, oh, he did the same mistake as he did in the first run. Briefly goes green, surely he'll be behind at the line, he is, 54-56. Oh. There's another one, 30, 2300 slower. Remember, yep. Kieber Manis went faster. Cripps was number six off the hill. Kieber Manis was number 20. Kieber Manis has got the second best start time. I'm liking Kieber Manis for a medal, eventually. Yep. It's going to be a long These uphill These were good climb. lines here. Oh, but that little tip right on the take on causes him yep. a little stress. And then in the graveyard, looks like he's going to get through here. OK, Martin. Now look at the runners. That's yep. look at the friction. He was gremlin. late. Wasn't Another he had gremlin to haul it up. up 14. Yeah. 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 He made mistakes okay, before so 13, after 14. Kiba Manis leads with three to go. He will be watching this very intently. Last year's four-man world championships was a German sweep. Friedrich won. Lochner took silver. Walter the bronze. Right now, there are three German-speaking sleds on the top three positions after our first heat. But one of them is Austrian. Now, most Germans would argue that a Bavarian driver and an Austrian driver don't speak German, but we'll pass that up. 517, 200's worse. Remember, Kieber Manis was exact, 13-13. He's got a 20 some 2400's lead on Kieber Manis. If it comes down to 6, 8, 10 at the bottom, Kieber Manis will take that for tomorrow. Three guys well, on this sled, all 100-meter sprinters. Yeah. Kristen Rasp is a 10.45. 100 meter sprinter. That may be one of the fastest guys in the field. Lockner has hundreds. to close That's a good sign. on the top two. If he wants anything other than bronze, this has to be an absolute He's coming back. Liar. This is advantage. Ooh. Keeper Mattis. Yeah. It's, it's, He's coming be back to well Keeper Mattis. Single on. digits. All Kieber Manis wanted to be within a tenth of one. Oh. And he is. Within 11. Look at him. He loves it. He knows. Yeah. He's just made a big comeback and positioned himself to medal. Hansi, 3,100s back. Hey, look at the Latvian. Look at. You see the yeah. Latvian guy over there? She's pointing his finger at him. We're going to get you. We're going to get you. The competitiveness amongst these guys, they're all great yeah. friends. But he yeah, lost some ground. They've got there. their helmets on. <laughs> Yes, he did. He lost 3,100s compared to his first heat. The average in the last five or six legs has been two tenths. Well, the question is, what will the last two sleds give us? Can't see much of a mistake there, Martin. But, of course, this telemetry is not working either. The cold weather, I think, is affecting the telemetry in most of these sleds. Yeah, I see a lot of the batteries didn't see the speed. dead. Not much run there. There's nothing wrong with that run. Johannes. Just tiny errors at the sharp end of the field are making a difference, aren't they? Well, Lochner leads with two faster sleds still to come. So what about Benny Meyer, Dunnett Moldovan, Marcus Sammer, and Christian Huber? Somewhere in a hotel room, Liz Meyer is barely daring to breathe right now. Come on, Liz, breathe. Oh, little skid, 5.15, get start. away. Yeah, 300 scores, he's got a skid there too. Best velocity we've seen so far, though. He drove great the first run, Martin. Really impressed us with his speed on the bottom part of the track. 
second in World Cup points this year. Three tenths lead. He gets this out to 45, 50 hundreds. That's a lot of pressure on Freaker coming up. And that's going to prevent Fourth that. Fourth best though. speed. Fourth best speed. Fourth best speed. Well, Friedrich may not be problem free either. Benny needs to keep his advantage alive. He sat down 38 hundreds up. He's got 37 in the back. Ooh. Four tenths. Look at him. Check oh. that. Save it. Oh. How did he get that back? Benny Meyer across the line. 54, 56. Okay. Seven yeah, tenths. Mark, you talked about difference. First heat. Seven tenths slower. Yeah, that's not going to put well, any we're... pressure on Friedrich, but he's got a 3,300s lead over Lochner. He'll take that. Wow. Remember, yeah. he crashed he out on the two man last week, Martin. He crashed out on the two man, so it's a little there. bit different. Look at the little drifts to the left. Look at the back in. end of the sled coming out. Yeah, there's yeah. Well, that's a skid there. That's his hands tap. on the steering. Now this is the, the danger. The back. Sideways into 15. Into 15. Oh, just got it off. Wow. That was close. So the horn for Francesco Friedrich, Torsten Margis, Candy Bauer, and Alexander Schuller. The start record, let's mention it again, 5.01. It was set last year. They want it back Ooh, and again a slide, 5.04. And a lot of pressure he had to have in the first curve, Martin. Even though with that huge start advantage, he definitely gave something up. But, you know, Martin, he hasn't lost a heat yet in four-man bobsledding. There's only been four races, so he's eight for eight. And the closest guy we saw was Benny Meyer in the last run had 800s deficiency to Friedrich. But Meyer didn't come down on a perfect run. Second best Second speed. Second best speed. Fastest of all, incredibly, Marcus Treichel at that stage. So Wolfgang Stanford can still away now. on the sled. Here we go. He's pulling away now, Mark. Yeah, he's pulling yeah, away. German this is a much better run. This is going to put him much three tenths run. clear overnight. 3,800s, oh, three tenths faster so three than tenths. Benny. Yeah, yeah, Benny was almost seven tenths slower, and Friedrich was 4,800 slower, so that's the difference. Yeah, but 4,800 slower. You know, five or six sleds the ago, track. the par was two tenths slower. I know, that all awesome mistake. The track gets worse. This doesn't help. He drifted to the left last time. This time he's going, or excuse me, he drifted both times to our right, his left. Mm. This is a mistake that they've made, even in the two man. They're so into trying to get the track record, Martin, at the yeah. start, that they should they think of being a little bit more conservative. Yeah. Nah. They're, you know, they're still <laughs> leading by four lines. tenths overnight. They want the records, they want the start record, they want the track record, they want the gold medal. They set themselves targets, and that's what makes it fun. Francesco Friedrich leads by 3,800s from Benny Meyer. Benny, suitably almost the same margin ahead of Johannes Lochner, but it suddenly is opened up. And right behind, look how close the log jam is inside the top 20. So three more sleds to go. Dominic Dvorak, 1.33 seconds off the lead. And 20th position after the first heat marker's striker was 1.29. So four hundredths of an improvement. He would have been in the top 20. Right now, in the danger zone overnight is Suk of Korea. Well, he's... No reason he shouldn't be up in the top 20, Martin. He's just been in a slump the last couple of weeks. He's got a different brakeman. Well, it's a, it's it's a bit of a different Dominic Dvorak. Yeah. He finished in He wants to stay place. within 250. He finished in third in the World Cup standings in two-man. But he was sixth position here last year in the four-man worlds, and he's struggling to make the top 20 at the midway point. He should be ahead of Suk. He is uh, he is ahead of Suk. 
by 12 hundredths of a second. 19th fastest run. He is currently in 20th. Well, that is one small sliver of light to take away overnight. But a sled that finished in sixth place last year, just squeezing into the top 20 this year. Well, much better run than his first run and shouldn't have been back there in 21st place. A guy with this talent, again, he won a bronze medal in the World Cup circuit this year in two man. Just yeah. hasn't got it together in the four man and, and Martin were only about three miles from the Czech Republic. So this is almost his home track. And behind him is Ivo De Bruyne. Ivo needs to find a good tenth, but a couple of tenths over Yunjin Suk would possibly get him into the top 20 as well. And that means pushing out Dominic Dvorak, 5.32 at the start, 600 slower than Dvorak's crew. Well, Evo crashed out in the two-man last week. 192, he wants to stay within 2.56 to move up. I don't think he's going to do it at this pace. Mm. He's going to lose another four tenths down here at least. Perfect lines. He might have a chance. Didn't race in the four man world. 3,500 more. 3,500 more here at the bottom. 1,800. He's got to find a way not to lose 1,800 at the bottom. He can have a chance to move up one. 252. Oh, barely. Yeah, four hundred ahead of Sook by ahead, four hundreds. He, he, he got ahead of Sook and he's eighteen hundreds down to Dvorak to make the cut. Yeah, which is doable. Oh, yeah, Dvorak needs That's to make a better a mistake, run, than it could second. happen. Twenty-third best time in the first run, twentieth best time in this run, so he's definitely improved. In the graveyard. Better than most. Then here in the finish, mm, a little rocking and rolling there. Yeah. yeah. One more run to make the top 20. That looks a little out of reach for the Swiss newcomer, Cedric Follador, with Nicola Mariani, Dominic Hufscheidt, and Marwan Juma. Juma is the uh, most experienced of the crew, having done a world championships in four man. He raced here with Tino Rona's crew. But Cedric Follador making his driving debut. It's only his fourth season driving a sled. And a debut too for Nicola Mariani and Dominic Hufschmidt. Well, Martin, I'll say this. He drove right down the track. The safest line is, you know, but sometimes when you drive right down the middle of the track, you're steering too much. You know, you have to let it go, get on the edge, don't steer. But in this rookie's case, it's best for him to drive right down the middle of the track in his first world championships. And, uh, yeah. you know, I agree. Yeah, the experience give him confidence. Under your Build belt. him up before the tracks start knocking you down, because they will. These, and, and if that was the plan, great lines. then I think, yeah. And not bad speed, 16th best speed. He's the 23rd sled, 15th best speed. There is something to be said for not skidding and hitting things on the way down. I mean, that is the, the overall big plan. Is he going to be in the top Other 20? The How close is he going to overhaul Suk? No, doesn't get to him. 1,400 behind Yunjin Suk. Hey, but that's, other than that mistake he just made in the graveyard, those were two good runs by this rookie. He came good down 1,100 slower than Ivo De Bruyne. That's not bad. This is his first Worlds. It's Ivo's, what, fourth in four man? And 2,200 like slower than his first run. Yeah. Ivo, Ivo's been driving a decade. This guy's in his, well, third full season. Don't want to do that. And then you know, all this stress you have going into 15, where we saw the mm -hmm. other Swiss sled crash out. 
And this yeah. is the finish where it seems like every sled's crashing out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Saying hi to his grandma back home. Not sure who that is. It's Marouin at the back, so that's either Dominic Hufschmidt or Nicola Mariani. Hard to tell with the helmets on, especially since you haven't met them. Well, next up, we will head into the final day of our BMW IBSF Bobsleigh and Skeleton World Championships with the Monobob and the four-man deciders in Altenburg on Sunday. And overnight, I'm not sure there are too many races where Francesco Friedrich doesn't sleep well before them. But overnight, I think he will be sleeping just as peacefully as a baby. He's got a handy advantage over the rest of the field. Benny Meyer remains in second, but the gap is no longer a few hundreds, 800s. It's gone out to 3,800s. Johannes Lochner in the bronze medal position, but the threat from behind with Kiba Manis and Cripps, if they get two good runs, they could grab medals. Our two Brits have met in the middle, haven't they? 400s between Brad Hall and Lamin Dean. Best of the BFR sled, still Guy Tukovic. And in the battle of the Swiss, Simon Friedley took a tumble and drops down, still in the top 20. But Dominic Dvorak rounds out the 20 overnight. For De Bruyn, Suk and Folidor, more work to do. And Roman Heinrich is on the way home, if you imagine, already till a plan in the morning. Well, that's it, one more day of racing. Until then, take care of yourself, enjoy the rest of your day. From John Morgan, me, Martin Haven, and the IBSF TV crew, four more heats, six more medals, one more day of racing in Altenburg. We'll see you then. Bye for now.